Hello, I am continuing on my previous tutorial in which we talked about uh, buffer overflows and how to exploit them and also moving forward we uh, developed some shell code using assembly language also the shell code was not that stable uh, due to various reasons but uh, we could uh, see the process how to develop shell code but the thing is in the world of windows or uh, any operating system and windows is um, complicated than other operating system what happens is uh, it's not that easy to exploit a program even though a program is vulnerable but due to various mechanisms due to the compiler when the program is compiled also due to various exploit mitigations that we call it the operating system when it loads the program into memory so what it does is we know about uh, DLL files when we write a program we want to split logic into separate entities and we call them DLL files so that the single executable size should not be very big otherwise like imagine if you have a 10 megabyte or maybe 50 megabyte of one exe file perhaps it has everything like 1 million lines of code so it wouldn't be ideal to load everything into memory so that's why we have concept of dll which makes sense so what operating system does is each time the computer restarts or we call reboot it would load the dlls into different locations so last time when we searched for the jump ESP instruction and we made use of DLL, sometime MSVCRT DLL, that is called common runtime. Sometimes uh, we could also use NT DLL. There are various DLLs. So the problem is when operating system loads those DLLs, it would load them into different locations. So each time the computer restarts our jump ESP address that would change always it will change so we cannot jump to reliably to a certain address and then moving forward from there we could land into our shell code area so that we could execute arbitrary code so that is what what we call as ASLR address space layout randomization if you Wikipedia it means there is a very uh, good description uh, what ASLR means so uh, I'm just explaining it in a uh, very short way whenever let me show you one uh, uh, image perhaps we'll get some good image so yeah I guess this one does this one is fine so uh, what happens is when uh, the booting happens the reboot each time you see the DLL the addresses keep changing see now we have kernel 32 kernel 32 DLL over here 7b and there are many zeros and next time when it boots it would be somewhere else right but memory is constant the RAM that we have that's a hardware device it's a goddamn hardware device the memory is always constant so this process by which operating system protects that you are not able to reliably jump to an address that is called ASLR or address space layout randomization that's a mouthful and there are many other mechanisms also and this I'm telling you uh, this information which is as old as uh, like 2013 so why why the hell I'm telling you all this because in order to start exploiting uh, all these vulnerabilities like buffer overflows and buffer overflow also comes in various flavors like right now we are talking about stack based buffer overflows like there are many like that also some are heap based overflow those are slightly complicated even though we would have tutorials on them also so these protection mechanism they surfaced very old means it's not new uh, after XP we saw Windows Vista and with uh, with Windows Vista we saw ASLR coming in now in Windows 7 also we have ASLR 
and moving forward we have everything not only that we have something called DEP as well data execution prevention it's a diff different thing we will talk about that later so uh, in a nutshell what happens is you you would be jumping into a area even if you could jump into a uh, your shell code area so that stack that area uh, of the RAM which we call stack it wouldn't be executable so our shell code wouldn't execute so there are various methods how to evade that also so today let's talk about uh, as we are uh, talking about ASLR so let's find a way that uh, we can evade this now to evade ASLR there are many many mechanisms so first of all is all this randomization so it's an expensive process so OS the operating system it doesn't randomize all the DLLs so what if we could find some DLLs which are loaded to the same location every time right if we could find such a DLL and the memory location we could just jump there because it wouldn't change this is the easiest method and today I'm going to show you that and in further videos we'll talk more about other ways uh, by which ASLR could be bypassed there are a ton of uh, methods like that and uh, also we would talk about uh, stack cookies uh, that is a compiler option in which uh, your executable would have uh, kind of a padding um, before even the main function runs so that we wouldn't know that how much that padding is so we wouldn't be able to predict uh, where we need to jump and uh, all, th all those stuff so and that happens in the runtime so we cannot predict that so we'll talk about that let's uh, jump ahead and uh, try to exploit a vulnerability which is uh, driven by ASLR which is protected by ASLR so I have uh, a vulnerable server over here which I downloaded uh, from a website and uh, this is a different one this is the vulnerable ser server that we are going to exploit today and last in last video we used uh, the free FTP uh, free float FTP server and here we have the source code also how to compile in Visual Studio 2008 so you can see uh, the code also you can do various things like fuzzing on uh, the server we'll talk more on that and also there are various uh, vulnerabilities in this so it's a good way to learn this right so let me fire up my immunity by now I think you would be knowing the drill so we have our immunity debugger set over here and that's how we hunt for vulnerabilities so CPU okay, I will maximize this and I will load the vulnerable server so I will this is in the pause mode so I will F9 F9 I'll press F9 and now uh, we can see the disassembly uh, towards the top left side and the right side we see the registers <coughs> In fact, these registers, F, uh, F, FPU, floating point unit, MMX, these registers, there are uh, many such registers which are provided be, by the uh, Intel um, uh, processor. So if you get a chance to read the Intel, ma Intel manual, so you would find uh, what they do. Also, it is possible we could store our shell code in one of those registers as well. And towards the right, we see our stack towards the uh, right down. And in the left down, we have our virtual memory, which is comprised of our physical RAM and some portion of the hard drive. So today, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, you to a plugin called Mona. So what Mona does is, it will show us how how many DLLs are loaded right now, and what protection mechanism they have. So the way to invoke that is first to download Mona from it has a github repository you download from there and put it in immunity by commands folder so let me show you that quickly as immunity is a x86 uh, x86 debugger means 32 bit debugger so you would find that here immunity and then by commands and then here the mona plugin is located i just download it from the github uh, repository and put it 
there it would need admin privileges so uh, if you are an admin in in your computer you can do that so I type Mona and then modules so here are the list of all the DLLs let me change the appearance here also there are many uh, many of the fonts so no, no this is small I think that was one that one was good so let's stick to this so as you can see over here we have rebase safe SEH structured exception handling and ASLR just now we talked about NX compact means non executable stack it's, it has something to do with DEP and then these are the OS DLL how many DLLs are there so we have to look for where everything is false right now this is a vulnerable server but still there are many DLLs like I mentioned in the beginning of the tutorial that the OS would load the program would ask the uh, operating system to load XYZ DLL and it would come to the memory right now it needs these many DLLs so they are there so as we can see over here if we try to jump to this location right if we find the location where this DLL is and we jump to that so each time the computer reboots it would change so these are the values ASLR NX all this stuff if we see over here ESSFunk.TLL you see that everything is false over here right so this is the DLL that if we could jump where uh, this DLL is located in the memory location and after the buffer overrun has happened like the minimum input that we provide and then we jump and uh, we pass the jump instruction to the EIP so if we could find the address where this DLL is located we would be able to execute our shell code every time doesn't matter if the computer restarts how many times so there is a command over of that so I have copied it and I will paste it over here so this is the way you type Mona find dash s and then backslash x backslash x now by now you would know what backslash x means it's just a hexadecimal representation so basically it is ff e4 this is nothing but jump ESP right this is the opcode for jump ESP so if we find ESSFunk.dll where it is and if I press enter so it found nine pointers pointers means these are the memory locations basically so this address if you take you can you could take any of these so right now if I take 625011AF so if I put that in my exploit so it doesn't matter how many times the computer restart but it would work right so I have already done that work and put it over here as you can see so this is a Perl script a small one and uh, the shell code it does nothing just opens a calculator I found uh, it very tedious to have two s separate VM set up on host only network and then exploit from Linux to Windows I thought god damn it what how does it matter we just need to be able to exploit a vulnerability means a program should do something that it is unintended to do like this is a FTP server so FTP server it should just uh, serve the files you should not be able to open calculator right that's that should not be possible but that's the way it works folks a program by forcing a program in order to achieve certain desired output so that is called exploitation and you would be hearing news about ransomware attacks so all these are not someone who desires them like right? who would want uh, that such attacks to happen but there are people out there and they are doing all these things so in order to stop them we have to learn that and we have to hunt the vulnerabilities in our system and fix that before bad guys do so you have to hack it 
otherwise someone else will and that uh, wouldn't be a good situation so what I will do is I will reload this uh, program so if you go to debug and then uh, restart so it will ask for some options now it is in pause mode so F9 F9 now it is in running mode so my script is ready so now what I will do is I will go to the exploits folder shift right click command prompt Perl exploit and then as I'm running in localhost so I just need to type the IP address of the localhost and port number 9999 and boom the calc.exe opened so it means it's a uh, good uh, proof of concept so it works now let's see if even if I restart the system whether this works or not so let's see that so I'm going to just leave all these as is and I'm going to restart so as I'm running in VM so it doesn't matter I would still be recording and you guys could see this restarting so it's a good uh, advantage uh, I have even uh, my whole pen testing lab set up over here so uh, let's uh, load the immunity again by the way we don't uh, need that but still uh, who cares we are uh, just uh, doing the process we are going through the process and it doesn't matter right but in the real world of course the debugger wouldn't be associated so let's go back to our exploit and shift right click Perl. now I have not even checked that what is the memory location nothing so the exploit should work like in the while right we say in the while means it should work boom so this is the thing this is how you evade ASLR now this is just one way and there are many other ways also like five seven different ways so we would jump into that also because it is possible right means the OS wouldn't load that DLL or it it would uh, the program would issue an interrupt that it, it should load only those DLLs which are ASLR by default also I guess Microsoft patches uh, right now what they are coming they are all ASLR enabled so we would have to evade those also so this is uh, like a sample program and we are taking advantage that uh, uh, the program is not loading all the DLLs which are ASLR enabled that's why this exploit is working and we would have part 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like I will cover all the ways in which this could be done by the time we are done we would be masters in evading ASLR, DP, stack cookies, emet you name it it's just, uh, it's just security research and it's our job to learn all these things and teach everyone and if you find these videos guys I highly recommend that learn from this and teach others like yesterday I was uh, uh, going through some of the news articles and uh, there had been a massive ransomware attack and uh, right now it doesn't matter if it is a ransomware or virus or worm who gives a shit about that finally it's doing some damage so if we suck at these things protecting our systems then god forbid no one can no one can save anyone right so being in security those who are they should learn all this stuff and protect their system like test these systems like where the vulnerability is what the hell is active directory all these stuff and how could you exploit that so hack it before someone else does so that's the whole point and uh, feel free to ask me questions and uh, please subscribe because I would be making all these videos and we learn a lot and have a good day bye bye I thank you for watching